Welcome back. For over 35 years, Advocates for Children, CASA, has been working with the children in the community. And there are, are so many ways that you can help. Here to tell us more is Director of Development and Community Relations, Andrea Tagto. All right, Andrea, let's get right into this and talk about this. Talk about, you know, who you guys are and what you guys do. Sure. Advocates for Children, CASA, is a local nonprofit organization. We primarily work with kids who have been abused or neglected and are now part of the child welfare system. So that means a lot of our kids are in foster care or in some kind of other out-of-home placement. Our court-appointed special advocates, our CASA volunteers, spend time getting to know these kids and really building a trusting, deep relationship. Our volunteers visit them in their home, wherever home might be, uh, getting to know them at school, working with their teachers. Sometimes they help facilitate sibling visits because so often our kids are separated from their brothers or sisters while they're in the system. Um, so our volunteers take all of this information that they're gathering and report back to the judge and other professionals who are making decisions on these kids' futures. That's that's our primary program at Advocates for Children CASA. We have some additional programs that offer wraparound services, working to help provide tutoring to our kids and other kids we get community referrals on. Uh, we have CASA volunteers in the truancy courts. We have a program called Legacy that works um, specifically with our teens. And most recently, we've developed a program called Foundations that pairs housing vouchers and mentors with young adults who have aged out of the system. Housing is a huge issue for those kids in that population. Um, so that's what Foundations does. You know, I can't even imagine what this pandemic has done to you guys. Can you talk a little bit about kind of what has been going on and, and really how you're going forward? The pandemic has been very difficult for our kids and our families. Um, these are children who have already experienced so much trauma and are supposed to be on the other side of it. And that hasn't been the case over the last year. The pandemic has presented a lot of additional uh, setbacks and trauma on trauma. It's been really, really hard for our kids and families. Um, as an example, I know so many of us can relate to having our kids home and having uh, you know, school either not happening or going remote. School is a huge source of consistency and stability for our kids. And having that routine disrupted has really taken its toll on their mental health. Uh, now that we see things opening back up and we're in this new phase of the pandemic, our cases are really challenging. These are children and families who have endured a lot of abuse that has often gone unreported mm -hmm. for a period of time. And we're really seeing the ramifications of that now with some real egregious cases of abuse and neglect. It's just so horrific. We could talk about it all day, but before we go, can you talk about really April and why that's important to you guys? Definitely. April's a huge month. It is Child Abuse Prevention Month. It's always a big deal to Advocates for Children CASA and the child welfare community, but it is especially important this year. CDC research says that one in seven U.S. children have experienced abuse or neglect in the last year. So it is so important that not only Advocates for Children CASA and other organizations do their part to prevent abuse, but that everyone at home does their part to make sure exactly. the kids in their life are safe and that families around them are strong. All right, Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you. You can help change a child's story. Visit advforchildren.org today to find how you can help. You can also text CASA to 26989.